not the worst, but those pants sure are the worst. Hey everybody, I'm Biebs Kelly. Welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for being here. Today we are going to take a look at the rest of Meghan Markle's Invictus appearances. If you missed part one where we looked at the first few days of her appearances, I will link it somewhere. It will also be in the description box. Be sure you don't miss that. So she continued her strange wardrobe choices throughout her next few days at Invictus. Let's start off with that birthday dinner outfit. The far too tight white jeans made a reappearance. It was Harry's birthday and they went to like a pub or a restaurant and had what was reported as a boozy evening. She paired it up with beige flats this time rather than those weird black flats that were just a horrible choice with that all white outfit. So I guess the flats were a little bit better, but I still don't really particularly like them. I feel like she should avoid the pointier toed shoes as much as possible because they just elongate her feet, which already look kind of long. And we finally see her in some color here. She has a sort of burgundy red or brick red striped button down on. And I just don't love this ensemble because the jeans are so tight that even though she has a perfectly fine top on, it's making it look too big for those jeans. It's making her upper body look so much bigger than her lower body simply because the jeans are far too tight. If the jeans had a more balanced straight leg and were not skinny and skin tight and far too tight that they're like pulling and puckering at every angle, um, I don't think it would have looked so bad. If she imagined with this top, it would look totally fine and normal. But these too tight jeans are just ruining this look altogether. Allegedly, they had a huge fight while at this bar or dinner in which they were both somewhat drunk, according to reports. It's not necessarily surprising from the behavior we've seen from these two. They do behave in a rather immature way, but just in general in life, I'm always questioning those who never grow out of having drunken arguments with their significant other or with anybody for that matter. These folks are in their 40s or almost there and still getting wasted and having petty arguments. I mean, it's just silly. I think the next outfit we saw her in after that was this romper look. Now, this was offensive to a lot of people and I completely understand why. It was out of place, it was inappropriate, and it was a bad choice. She shouldn't have been walking in front of these veterans. It should have been Harry because he's an actual veteran. But if she was going to, she needed to dress in a much more appropriate manner. She should have had, at minimum, slacks, a blouse, and a blazer top because they are in uniform, some of them, and the athletes are dressed as they were competing. She needed to be wearing something that was similar in vibe and that was respectful to these people's uniform. If you're gonna be next to somebody in military uniform, you should be in something professional. She did not look professional. She looked horrendous next to these people. It was so cringy and out of place. It was difficult to look at these pictures, honestly, because it's just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe she did that. The etiquette fail here is off the charts outfit itself, even in a different setting, the shorts were too short for this occasion. The belt was loud and huge and billowing out with its big bow. The neckline, however, I think was fine. I, I have been talking a lot about how with the shorter neck, you need to open that area up a little bit, and she did here, so even paired up with the collar and the blazer layered up around here, her neckline was still open enough that that area looked just fine. The black sandals, though, are one of the biggest fashion faux pas she's made. Why, in a very light and pale outfit with shorts on, would you drag the whole look down with black sandals? If this was a black romper or a patterned romper or had a black blazer, it would have been fine to have these weird black sandals, but they literally look like slides, like flip-flop style sandals. You should not be wearing those next to somebody in uniform. You are gonna look completely out of place. It is a basic rule of etiquette for a reason, for your own sake. Do not wear something out of place for the occasion because you will end up looking bad. So this is the second time that she has paired black shoes with a all light, white, or cream outfit. 
it's very, very odd. We know this woman has lots of shoes. We know this woman has lots of money. There's no reason why she couldn't have picked out a light color pair of flats that would work with both of her white outfits. It makes zero sense. On to another cream colored outfit. Oh my goodness, the woman can only see cream, beige, tan, black, or white, apparently. She is wearing the highest rise pants we have ever seen her in, I think. These are literally up to the underwire of her brassiere here. What is she doing wearing pants that literally come all the way up here? They don't look good on almost anybody. You have to have a long torso to be able to pull these off. It is a horrible choice. It shortens her torso. It shortens her body overall. It makes her hips and upper thigh area as well as her lower belly area look strange. And then the belt is lower than the pants themselves. So it's almost giving a paper bag waist effect where it's really drawing your attention there a lot and it just looks horrible. I mean the belt itself blends into the pants enough that it's not the worst belt choice but the pants are just far too high for her. The rise is just insane for somebody with her proportions. I can't understand it. Now as far as lower down on this outfit the fit of the pants throughout the legs from above the knees downwards is actually quite nice. If you would just look just from like above the knee and down, you can see that the taper and the fit of these pants is actually really flattering to her legs. And the 7 eighths length is a great choice for her. Anything that she's wearing that is 7 eighths or slightly cropped is actually really, really great to help to shorten her limbs a little bit and make them in better proportion to her upper body, giving her a more balanced silhouette overall, especially when it comes to vertical lines. So I do like the way the pants look, from the knees down. However, the rest of the pants looks dumb, quite frankly. The trench actually is quite fine here because she isn't buttoning it up with like a big bow belt situation. She just has it down and loose and that is just fine. That part of her outfit is flattering as well as the scoop neck that she has on. Though I would question if the scoop neck really fits in with these pants and trench that look very upscale. Be sure you're subscribed because I'm going to be launching a poll of which pair of giant pants was the worst. By the way, I did look farther into that that Black Banana Republic dress that she wore during her me speech when she first arrived at the Invictus Games and it actually comes with a sash belt that is to be tied straight, not in a bow, asymmetrically is how they styled it in their advertisements for this dress which would have been actually very nice on Meghan Markle. It would have allowed for that division between the shirt top and the pleated semi pleated skirt because when you have something asymmetrical remember it draws your eye off to the side and by tying it in this manner of the sash style tie rather than a bow it allows you to really follow that vertical line very nicely which is elongating to a figure so this would have been really really nice it would have blended in nicely with the dress rather than this braided belt which created shine and texture and drew your eye in a little bit more than this would have this would have just allowed your eye to drift to the side to where that sash began and then flow along the rest of the dress. That would have been a much better option than this that sort of just cut the vertical line a little bit because it was so eye-catching. Moving on to another belted dress, she wore this blue dress that I have mixed feelings about. I'm happy to see her able to wear a color at the Invictus Games but it has this terribly huge tie belt right smack dab in the middle. It's just awful. Why didn't she style this belt in the way we just spoke about as a asymmetrical sash tie belt off to the side? It would have helped to elongate. It would have helped to minimize the horizontal color blocking. And I think it would have been a lot more appealing and slimming than this big messy sloppy tie in the center. Anytime you have horizontal stripes or horizontal color blocking, it tends to widen and shorten your figure. I personally tend to stay away from as somebody who's just barely over five foot because it just 
shortens you a little bit and chops you up and widens you. And since Megan tends to have a little bit of a problem with appearing wider than she really is and has that wider torso, I'm not 100% behind this. However, because the horizontal color blocking is primarily just in the skirt portion of this dress, it actually allows for a little bit of balance to her upper body because there's less widening effect in the upper body and there is some widening in the lower body, then it kind of balances things out a little bit visually. I think it wasn't the worst choice, but I also think that there's a lot of other options that could be much more flattering to her figure. And it's a little bit predictable. She's always going for these things that have these big messy tie bow belts that just don't do her any favors. I'm a little frustrated noticing that she still hasn't grown style perspective away from the big bow tie belts. And yet again, we have messy sleeves. I guess maybe she just wants this, this shove the sleeve up to the elbow in a messy and voluminous way to be her signature. And you know, let's let her have it. If she wants that to be one of her signature style looks, so be it. At least it matches the somewhat messy personal life she has cultivated for herself by constantly complaining and trashing people publicly. That's pretty messy. These sleeves are pretty messy. Maybe we should just let her identify with this messiness. Next, we briefly saw her in this halter dress. Now, this one I'm also a little on the fence about, you guys, because the simple silhouettes are great for her. Something that is all one color, very streamlined the way this is, is going to be slimming and lengthening to your figure. So no matter who you are, if you want to slim or lengthen your figure a little bit, choosing something very streamlined, very simple and monochrome like this without anything dividing it up and chunking up your vertical lines is going to be a great option all of the time. However, this is very heavy on the shoulders. It's very much accentuating the shoulders. It does provide a little bit of balance to the turtleneck, which takes away from the lengthening of her neckline area. But I just feel that the halter necks or sleeveless types of things are not necessarily the best option in this sort of professional capacity. I think something that would have had sleeves just halfway down or to three quarters would have been the best option for her figure overall when you look at her balance. But she went for the halter top again. Maybe it's her Invictus tradition to assault us with a halter top. My biggest gripe about this outfit, however, is she's clearly not wearing the proper undergarments. It looks like she has a very tight pair of undies on or shapewear that is in a bikini length. So rather than a piece of shapewear that has a built-in slip skirt where the shapewear just comes all the way down to like your thighs as a skirt or that has the bike short style where it's all one piece like the ones wrestlers wear where it's bike shorts all the way up that eliminates panty lines altogether and keeps you safe from having this this deep cut along the hip area along the buttocks area that just looks so bad, especially in a dress like this. This is a very simple dress. It needed very smooth base to look nice. I have a dress just like this and you cannot, I've tried, without some sort of slip or undergarment that is smoothing underneath and it is not working. It is the exact same type of texture and material that her halter dress is here. You just have to have an impeccably smooth base under a sweater dress like this or a dress of this style. And she didn't. She didn't. It's horrible. It is a bad, bad panty line. It looks like she's wearing something that's two to three sizes too small. I'm guessing from the pictures that you can see here, I'm guessing that she was wearing some sort of shapewear that was just a bikini bottom or like a regular underwear style bottom. It didn't extend down to the thighs the way a bike short style would. Something like this is probably what she's wearing underneath or she could just have on plain old bikini undies which is cutting in too bad. They're too tight. What the heck? Why would you leave the house this way? And why isn't Harry telling her? Rude. I would be so disappointed if somebody didn't warn me that a panty line was showing, especially at a professional engagement where you're gonna have photographs taken, some sort of occasion like this. You gotta help a sister out. 
But this reminds me of the brown silk top. Now, there was a lot of comments talking about her top button pulling. Now, I think this was simply because the shirt was silky and it was starting to slide back. She was just pulling it back down to where it needed to be, and that's why that top button was puckering a little bit, at which point she probably would have had it unbuttoned too far. There's another fail we can add to the list from that outfit. But as far as the bra situation or her bust goes, I don't see any discernible bra lines, so it's possible she was just wearing pasties or some sort of stick-on bra, which is problematic because it doesn't leave you with a very flattering look to your bust. It does run the risk of showing off a sort of saggy look, or if you're asymmetrical, that will be very evident. I can't say for sure that I can detect some sort of stick on bra or pasty type situation. I feel like the satin texture, the shiny texture of the top is really obscuring any chance of getting to the bottom of that and it didn't provide her with a very flattering finish. So onward to her final appearance at the Invictus Games in this turquoise dress which looked like she had been attacked by a cat. I do not understand why she chose something strapless, too tight, and that had a ton of, essentially, holes from the upper thighs down. This was not an appropriate choice for the event. These are military veterans. This is supposed to be a charity oriented towards very noble causes for people who have earned respect, who deserve respect, and this is supposed to be one of the ways that we can honor those who have served our countries and honor their achievements thereafter, honor the sacrifices they made, which in this case are mostly physical and mental. These are people who have dealt with very challenging circumstances because of their service to others. So if there was any place where respect needed to be showed, it would have been here especially at this closing ceremony. This was not some glitzy night out to go watch some sort of concert. Wearing something strapless, I find completely inappropriate. Wearing something with see-through bits or holes in it, I also find completely inappropriate. She should have worn something that was a little bit more formal and had sleeves and still professional because she and Harry are supposed to be there in a more professional capacity. I will say the color is very beautiful and it looks lovely on her. Her makeup throughout the entire time at Invictus was far too dark once again. It made her eyes look even more recessed, even more dark, and even more small. Having this sort of cutout pattern in the skirt that starts pretty high up above the knee is just really not appropriate. It's sending more of a date night vibe and I think it would have been totally fine for something like a movie premiere. This really wasn't that and I wish she would have chosen something that showed a little bit more respect and appreciation for those around her. If you like the top I'm wearing or are interested in any of the products that I use to get ready today, they will be linked in the products tab. It should pop up on screen when you tap the screen at the beginning and the end of the video, and it should also be somewhere near the description box. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe if you enjoyed today's video, and if you click the bell icon, you will not miss any of my upcoming videos. Thank you so much for being here with me. Have a happy day, and I will see you next time. Bye!